Hey, Jake Lloyd Bacon, did you see that on Monday Night Raw Retribution came back? Uh, no, Scott Nover, I must have missed that. When? At the end of the show. Wait, like the very, very end of it? Yeah, they took everybody out. Oh, no, I don't think that was Retribution. Okay, if it wasn't Retribution, then who was it? I'm pretty sure it was the Wyatt Six. Oh, yeah? How do you spell it? W-Y-A-T-T-S-I-C-K-S. That's how they're spelling it. Yeah, that's a Retribution name. The Wyatt Six debuts and more today on Pro Wrestling Pals. Scott Narver. Hey, Jay Lloyd Bacon. Uh, hello to everybody out there listening on the pod feeds and in your podcast players of choice. Or maybe you go to the website. I don't know. Maybe you go right to pwpowskis.com and you click the player right then and there. Who knows? Um, maybe you're one of the very, very special few who join us live via the super exclusive patron only live stream. Thanks to all of you who join us. Uh, Mike Lucas in the chat doesn't even say hi. First just says, uh, is today a double stream day? So yes, it is. Today's a double stream day because that's what you get. You get double stream days only if you become a patron over at patreon.com slash PW Palskis. Uh, and hear that Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Double stream. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> I, I was going to find a segue, but I'm going to, for the sake of Gilbert's, <laughs> I'm not going to do that now. Um, we must acknowledge PWP champ Gilbert Short, a.k.a. Goliathon, in the second month of his current reign, tied for longest reign and most title victories. Will Gilbert defend his title for the month of July, or will he be dethroned? If you I would, mean he will defend it. Will he successfully defend it? That also, I don't also know. we don't know whether he will defend it. He might at right before the first of next month, he might just be like, screw it. I'm just canceling my patron. Oh, he might be like, Hey everybody, Not enough. I have an ingrown toenail. I have to forfeit my PWP championship. And everybody would be like, No, don't. Um uh next week. Next week the uh the PWP championship battle Royal uh, will occur. So if you'd like to uh, throw your name in that hat, well, you got to become a championship house over on the Patreon. Uh, Scott Narver, you and I both had early morning pet extravaganzas. Yes. I think yours might've been a little worse than mine. Cause it seems like yours did not stop. Yours started early and then con- con- continued the entire morning. It, it went on for a while. And then, by the time that there was peace in this household, it was too late. Then, uh, like, oh, maybe I can go back to sleep. And I get a text from someone saying, "Hey, you still aiming for no. nine a.m. right?" <laughs> I mean, in fairness, I texted you that only like fifteen minutes prior, right? It wasn't that much earlier. Yeah, it was just the hope, though. Like, I didn't right. have a good sense of time and everything. You could have just said, "And no, let's push an hour," and I would have been like, "Sure, whatever." It it wouldn't have been enough. Got it. Just being up and and going is is much better than like, hey, can I have some a little bit more time to be groggier? And then when you ask, like, are you awake now? <laughs> right. To be probably even more wrecked. So. Um, I understand that. A little a little groggitude. Yeah, I'm a little groggitude too. Uh, Bookstore Brown decided he needed to go to the bathroom at four forty five in the morning. And because I woke up abruptly to take him outside, then I did not feel well. And I got like an immediate sour stomach by just like getting up and going out so abruptly. So then I couldn't fall back asleep until like, you know, six or so. But then I inevitably did fall back asleep and get at least another hour and a half, two hours. So I do feel that's why I think you had it worse. Well, I'm glad you got that. So that way you can be the higher functioning Powski today. Well, at least... At least you're the one with all the information. Hey, that's all right. I got it minutes before the show. We're good to go. Um, we are good to go. Scott Narver, um, 
there's a lot happening in the world of uh, of PW, the PW part of the PWP. Um, we had some uh, some debuts, some news, some releases. What's going What's going on in the world? The world of PW right now. Who, who got released? It sounds like uh, Bookstore Brown didn't even do a release. No, look, Bookstore Brown did not release. It was all It was all smoke, no fire. I guess there was a yeah, release. The, there was an extension of that contract. <laughs> That's a good point. Well. Some are going to be really sad about this. I, I I have no strong feelings about this, but I saw in our Discord that there was uh, much c- crying out and upsetness that Kayla Braxton announces impending departure from WWE. Uh, yeah, it's been how long with Kayla? It's been a while, right? Probably longer than uh, most. Please sing it. It's been a while since Kayla yeah, came to the E. I only got, I needed an extra syllable there. Um, so, Honor Personality Kayla Braxton will be wrapping up with WWE following Friday SmackDown from Madison Square Garden in New York City. Uh, she, you're asking when she showed up. She signed with WWE in 2016. Yeah, it's got, it feels like that wasn't that long ago, but it was eight years ago. Yeah, she got shit to do. She wrote a really long post on Instagram and shared it on Twitter and such. And uh, let's let's read some of it here. Uh, After nearly eight years holding the microphone on WWE television, I am setting it down <laughs> to pursue my next chapter. Wow. Not a mic drop, a mic set down. It's less exciting. Yeah. Clearly, those microphones are really expensive. Well, it's not that they're expensive. It's that the WWE overcharges talent for them when they take the value of them out of their uh, of their paychecks for I see. bashing people over the head with them and stuff. Next week at the world's most famous arena, I will be officially signing off. During my years with WWE, I was able to master the art of the backstage interview. Ooh. All right. Now, now she's mic dropping. <laughs> master that's i did not see that that's uh you know it's a very specific word to use yeah not hey i think we had some fun hey i got pretty good at i don't recall me and gene ever going like i fucking master i was next no no one could touch anything that i ever did ever i love that it's like there's like a it's like it's like a, the bombacity of like hip hop where it's just like yo nobody can touch me nobody could spit fire when it comes to interviewing wrestlers like I can uh you know she goes on to kind of give a recap of her career in, two th- in 2016 the legendary Michael Cole all right see we got she's mastering things Michael Cole's legendary she needs to it get out and see to me the world, like she's, I think, is what's going on. Sounds to me like she's, the only thing she's mastered is hyperbole. <laughs> she's in a very Vince McMahon bubble, it seems like. It's just like, right. this is it. It's all there is. See that? That's Michael Cole. He's legendary. Oh, what you've done with the backstage interview? Yes, you've mastered it. <gasps> Goes to ESPN. Yay, mastered shit. <laughs> get to work. So she hasn't said what is going to be next. Just that there will be something next. I'm assuming something is, if not fully lined up, that it's she's got to, to be in talks for something. Right. Like she's not just gonna go and start a t- Twitch stream. I mean, I, I, maybe this is, I don't know, uh, hyperbole. No, I don't know. Like uh, I'm making assumptions here, but like I just assume all of these people will just want to be actors. Like all these broadcast people, but maybe they sure. want to go into actual sports or, broadcasting or sports too. Journalists. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it could be that it could be, you know, but I, you know, I don't know. I feel like this, the only stuff I recall of her is the stuff with Heyman. I don't know if it's because she was as good as Heyman was, but Heyman makes everybody better. And she was good. I'm not saying she wasn't, you know, like those were fun moments. Heyman made it a point to play along with her. Yes, absolutely. And like give a character to the people in WWE who are supposed to not have characters. 
Yes. Which I think is is a nice change of pace. I think that's why she stands out is because she actually has, you know, uh, there's there's a story in her in, in her WWE lineage, which not a lot of backstage interviewers and personality types have. Yeah, they're more robotic these days. Mm hmm. But she was also the host of so their, gone. their web show, right? I'm sorry. The bump? Yeah, yeah, the bump. I think we have a little bit of a delay. I apologize to people uh, if if we're talking over each other. It's not intentional. Um, that's our bump. That's our bump. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and I feel like the bump was pretty successful. I never watched any of it, but I know that it's the people people <laughs> watch it. People are always sharing, sharing clips in the Discord. Like, I think it's still going. Yeah. She did it over gonna, 200 shows. Who's taking over for the bump? Was she the primary host? No, because there was that other guy. There was that like white guy who was like the co-host maybe with her. Triple H. Does he show up for all of those? Wow. That guy credit. Yeah. He's a workhorse. Hey, guys, we bumping today. <laughs> they should. I don't know why Maven's not the host of that show. Um, Stop Maven's revenue weird. <laughs> stream from coming in. And you profit off Maven. That's a good point. Undertaker had Maven in for his show for crying out loud. Like that. that's how much, yeah. that's how Maven's doing. It also felt like Undertaker had him on for the sole purpose of having Maven say, don't be mad at Undertaker for hitting me so hard. You guys, <laughs> I saw that clip and I went like, oh yeah, I wonder why you, I wonder why you had him on. I love that. I have the idea of a wrestler who has a podcast solely with the intent of having people on to clear their own name. Well, he hasn't had Coco Beware on no, yet. No, listen, he has Seems not. like that's the big one. He did. That was the only one that it looked like he maybe took a little bit of a uh, little heat on and acknowledged himself. Yeah, that God what Hogan claims. Can't say the word acknowledge anymore. Coco Beware is actually like, no, I'm a foot shorter. <laughs> well, but don't be sad because when WWE closes a door on someone, someone gets thrown through a barbershop window. Jacob Fatu has debuted in WWE. The son of the Tonga kid and cousin to Solo Sokoa and the Usos made his long anticipated WWE debut on Friday night's SmackDown, aligning with the bloodline in an attack on Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, and Kevin Owens. About to pose with the bloodline to close the show, doing the one figure in the air pose along Sokoa, Tonga, and Loa. Is Jimmy either injured or now no longer part of the bloodline? Did I miss that? Do you even know? I don't know. Because I I haven't seen him on TV, and I don't know if it's intentional or if it's if he got injured or, or what the deal is with him. Maybe someone in the chat can let me know if they've been watching regularly. Uh, but I did watch. Uh, I did watch SmackDown. Uh, uh, you know the punk of it all. I was like, I got to get in there. It's still punk's music starts the show, and I'm I'm still like, wow, I can't believe punk is in fucking WWE. Like it's still kind of insane to me. Um, but then he got murdered because they love murder. <laughs> they do, they love it. Uh, Solo. Yeah, I just this found debut. Out, we're gonna get to another debut that's making more headlines. But Solo um, kicked Jimmy out, according to the chat. Are they out? So, are they? Are there any more potential bloodline members, oh. or is this the next nine weeks of programming? Um, yeah, isn't there? Um, uh, who's Amaga's son? Right, I think it's Umaga's son, maybe who's who's still out there, <laughs> still out there, like there. Like loose in the wild, they can't. They, tame haven't, him? they haven't. They haven't captured him with a, Triple H. Hasn't netted him yet. Oh man, um, he's got to get him. He could be a danger to himself and others. I mean, I mean the the tree is so big that I'm assuming there are plenty. Uh, plenty is still for them to get, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Mike Lucas in the chat saying Zilla Fatu is Umaga's That's son. That's who I was thinking of. Yes, I feel like Zilla. What, but Are they even a wrestler yes. or do they work at Forever 21? Um, why Forever 21? Zilla seems like a name that I would see on a on a badge in Forever 21. Really? Like Godzilla? Um, 
No, I put no false god before Zilla. I think Zilla's just uh You gotta still put very the Ten clean. Commandments up in the studio over there because uh, come, come on, we've got new rules in this country. Which which ten? <laughs> which religion? The first ten. Um isn't that just the uh the Bill of Rights? Not that I'm aware of, no. Uh, anyways, yeah, I think Zilla Fat 2 is still really green, but that's not stopped WWE in the past from uh, pulling I up. I mean, Solo Seco is running this thing. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like a stock of broccoli. How long did Solo wrestle for, like pre-NXT, though? Was he like in the indies or was he pretty much like... I don't sure. know. God, if only we... I don't know about all these... I can't keep track of him now. It's too confusing. Um, but he's green as shit. Well, he's green as baby shit. They're clearly setting up for, uh, you know, bloodline civil war part two, where we'll get the original bloodline sans solo. Or maybe one other. Cause it's going to be kind of an unfair fight. If it's like five against just the two or three, or do you think well, that Sammy, right? Sammy, oh, of course, <laughs> right, right, right. So it'll be Sammy, Jimmy, I guess Jay can, if, if Roman turns baby face, I, that seems like a lot of history to just ignore, but whatever. They WWE does it all the time. So it'll be, but it's, it's family. Yeah. Family comes first. And as long as he just keeps the yeet shit to a minimum, I think Roman could stomach it. Maybe Heyman will suit up. Well, hey, listen, Heyman wants to go and, and hang out with CM Punk instead. That was such a strange I, <laughs> moment. Can I tell of, you? Uh, there were two favors that I need, you know, one from you and one for me. And uh, he's asking CM Punk, like, hey, leave this because the bloodline's going to come out and beat right. you up. And then Punk asks, what's the favor you want from me? And Heyman <laughs> in tears going, take me with you. You know, I don't dislike. Leave. I don't dislike that he said that. I dislike that he did it like on mic because it would have been I feel like Heyman knows better like that moment should have been him whispering in his ear but cameras camera can see it but the bloodline can't and uh solo can't like it did seem a little bit like you're not very bright <laughs> it's just like why can't he leave because he's afraid that they're going to murder him and his family why because WWE's murdering everybody I don't. It seems like he's like a sodomy puppet. I don't understand, like what 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 they're doing to him. Where he's just like, I can't. I don't know. I have two phones and I can't leave. I'm not an adult man. They have all my snacks. I don't. I can't go. I don't know. He's clearly help. Why is that? Why? Uh, why does any wrestler stay with you? Know Brock Lesnar as a friend. What about Brock Lesnar? He's not enjoying it. In he knows Brock Lesnar as a friend. Like, call him. You're being bullied. Call the bigger bully. Yeah. I don't think Trip. I don't understand the logic of the smartest man in pro wrestling. The one who has all the connections in the world is, is now... Because I thought, oh, it's going to be a ploy. And he's going to be messing with Punk. But it's like, no, he's just really sad. And he wants out. He's in an abusive relationship. He is, but and Paul Heyman can't leave because he's afraid that uh, that Roman will will come back and he won't be there and be a part of it because he loves Roman. Yeah, but Roman has a DVR. I'm sure. And he's just watching the show anyway and going like, "What a bitch!" <laughs> so is the so I does the Rock. Leukemia. You can't. So, I mean, like these you can't are fight any of these guys off. All these other people who are supposed to be these great, big, iconic legends just fucking sit at home doing nothing. Nobody cares. Re wrestlers? Call Muhammad Ali, uh, Ali's wife. <laughs> She'll just give him Call a somebody. championship. They're like, this isn't what I need. Yeah. I don't need a belt. I, I don't know. It's hard for me to get behind. This is what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I did. It's not hard for me to get behind the idea that like he's afraid of Solo and he like he wants to be a part of the bloodline. He wants to be there for him. And that I get. It's that execution of him just like saying it on mic as loud as he could for everybody to see. That to me just felt like a dumb move. 
Whereas, yeah. whereas if it was like a secret and then it was like, what did he give him? What did he tell him? Blah, blah, blah. You know, that kind of shit. Well, the secret's out on something else, Jake. Um, WWE filed for a new trademark with potential ties to the Bloodline storyline. I saw this. WWE applied for a Caesar Sokoa trademark. So... Do we think this is a rebranding of Solo, or is this a, uh, a, a yet another? <laughs> this is going to be Zillow, Zilla. I would think a rebranding that he's no longer going to be Solo because how can you be Solo when you run a group of guys, right? Isn't that just confusing? I mean, if your if your if your confines are the English language, probably yeah. Which they are. Um, yeah, I mean, Caesar Caesar Sokoa d- doesn't necessarily roll off of the tongue as much as Solo Sokoa does. I it think does if Jack Z- Swagger's on commentary. Oh boy, I think it's because of the Z sound of Z- Caesar C- C- Caesar Sokoa. Sokoa. Um, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't love it, <laughs> but also. All hail Caesar Sokoa, right. like if, if it turns into something like that. They're trying to do like Roman, like the Roman Empire, Caesar, the fall of the Roman Empire. I don't know. I it, It's. Or he just loves that salad. But also, he yeah. Likes a little anchovy there's some, in his there's salad. There's said about like, we're doing the story about this bloodline and like the rich history of like the, these, uh, like the Samoan culture and the Pacific Islanders and like, but also we're going to name him after this like Greek guy. Could be. I don't know. I don't know what Heyman has in store that he can't, you know, can't defend himself, but he can hail a Caesar. I mean, or maybe uh, Sokoa is just a really big certain trilogy uh, Planet of the Apes fan. Okay. Okay. He just, like, he just likes the, the, the more recently modern three. And he wants it on it. He wants a piece of it. I mean... Why not go with first names though? Why not Julius? Julius. Sokoa. Julius Sokoa. Yeah, and then eventually, years down the well, road, because then when Orange Cassidy, you know, you got Orange Cassidy. Yeah, you know. sorry, we were gonna go to the same joke. All right, never mind. <laughs> they could open up a little stand next to a Wall Burgers. Exactly. Great symmetry. Oh boy. <laughs> Was, uh, all because I wanted to make a dumb Orange Julius joke. Well, first names, and then you're like, yeah, and then we got Orange Cassidy. Yeah, listen, guys. Sometimes, uh, sometimes we get we wake up really early. <laughs> Maybe we force it a little bit. Sometimes, and we need our Orange Julius. Sometimes we just didn't get the Orange Julius early enough in the day, and we're just trying to get through, get through the afternoon with you kids. Um. And Hi, pretty Lama. surprising news. I don't think this had. <laughs> I don't think this had leaked out anywhere. Uh, TNA wrestlers Joe Hendry and Frankie Kazarian appeared in an in a WWE NXT Battle Royal on NXT television. They were surprise entrants. You know that that definitely says something about the social media hype around Joe Hendry because I did not know about Kazarian. <laughs> I had no idea. I knew Joe Hendry because I I've seen the video a million times already. Not of him actually wrestling, just of his entrance and people being excited. So you saw the footage of this going around? Yeah, just like just like the the weight of people seeing who it was, and then the music playing, and then the place going crazy, and yeah. So now, do you believe in Joe Hendry? Um, like, do I think that he exists? Yeah, I saw a video of him. I totally believe that he's a person who exists. He's I saw him. He was walking down the aisle to the ring. Oh, well, that's one of us. Just because I see a video of someone doesn't mean I believe it. It could be a it could be a deep fake. You never know. So this was yeah, fans were clearly excited and then went, Oh, there's also Frankie Kazarian. <laughs> Poor Kazarian. WWE's Velocity Zone. <laughs> Frankie Kazarian. Mass Lama in the chat says the blasted theme song of Joe Henry's has been stuck in my head since Tuesday. Henry. What did I say? Henry. 
uh, I like that he says that blasted as if like 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 that that darn oh that blasted theme song, but also makes it sound like he just plays it really loud. It's like God, that blasted theme song is just so loud. They need to lower the volume of it. <laughs> blasted. Yeah, it's. It doesn't really stick in my head. I think I know what the main lyric is, but Isn't then it just, I believe in Joe Henry. When that, yeah, when that plays in my head, then there's just a little voice that goes, "I don't." I mean, listen, I am excited that WWE and TNA are working together the way that they're working together. I think it's fun. I think it's good for business. Um, I are you excited? Really? Wish? Yeah, hundred percent. It's it feels. This feels like a unique chapter at this point where it's consistent. It's not like when, you know, three years ago, whenever the fuck it was, when Mickey James showed up with the knockouts title at Rumble, that to me felt like, yeah, they, they're, they're struggling to fill up a ring of 30 women that, you know, that think that AEW isn't uh, uh, contracted or whatever. And uh, it was fun and unique, but it didn't feel like it It felt just like a one off thing. Now it's happening so consistently that it does feel like, oh, that's a fun little thing to look forward to that every now and then you might get a surprise from another company. And it's not that big of a deal. It's not like it could just be. Yeah, we have a one off match or a quick feud that's just get to get through one pay-per-view where somebody's there for the company. And I like it. It's unique. Whether if not you weren't we see doing the show, roster? wouldn't you potentially always think that they're just in NXT anyway? Um, and you go, I oh, mean, I, if, I guess I haven't seen if them If I yet. didn't, yeah, I mean, if I, and I mean, I don't know. I don't think so because you can't see it without the accompanying commentary of TNA star or indie star or whoever, you know, uh, like it always comes with the news that they're not from there. So I would know, yes, because. That's just the context of the way I'm seeing everything. Yeah, they tried to really market this thing saying TNA stars and said their names. And I was like, mm, I've, I've watched the latest show. They were not on it. That That's a that's a reach. Oh, the star part? Right, Sush? That's a deep reach. Star? Star? Yeah, she's wide-eyed and going like Kazarian. So, yeah, 25 years ago. So... What about Joe Hendry? Don't you believe in, or is it just because you haven't seen? Have you seen something and been like, "Yeah, don't like it," or have you just like, are you not seeing anything like I am? Uh, I don't. You know, we talked about a little bit before when reviewing uh, against all odds, and I know our Discord and internet community overall just love Joe Hendry, and great, good for them. I'm not taking any of that away. It's just my what I've seen so far, I don't think he's particularly funny. Uh, the song and stuff, it's like, yeah, that's fine, but it doesn't do anything for me. It's catchy, but it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, make me like him. It's no Bobby Roode glorious soon. Otherwise. Yeah. It's like, I, I don't love Amco, but I know their jingle. <laughs> so sure. like, it doesn't, it doesn't build that in. And as a wrestler, I saw that that one match so far, and it was just obvious and and plotting. Got it. Like he telegraphs a whole bunch, and he's just obvious. There's no sense of a fight, and he's not. I don't know. There wasn't much of a comedy character in his wrestling either, and I was just like, yeah, you're just very generic. Um, but you have a sense of humor. It just wasn't for me. Interesting. So well, so far, I don't believe. I hope to. It'd be fun. It's it's way more fun to enjoy it than to go. Eh, what is this? Interesting. Yeah, I I just haven't seen anything other than his parody videos, his music videos. Like that's the stuff that gets shared, and I don't dislike them. Like I like the effort that he puts into them. Sometimes they're funnier than other times, but like you know, we mm -hmm. always talk about like funny and then funny for wrestling. Sometimes he's just funny, and sometimes he's funny for wrestling. It's a little inconsistent, but I don't. I like that he's doing them. They they definitely feel unique. It feels like he's putting a lot of work into, especially like when he's just doing indie shows, he's putting a ton of work into uh, the marketing aspect of making a star on the indies. The problem is, is that there was, uh, from what I saw, those all overshadowed his actual wrestling and matches. 
I never saw people sharing clips of his matches. I only saw people sharing clips of his music videos and the parodies. And they were like, this is so great. Look at the latest Joe Hendry, Joe Hendry music video. And in this case, like, I get that you need to be a pro wrestler to make the parodies because they're about you wrestling. But it seems like maybe you just like making music video parodies, in which case maybe just start a YouTube and do that. Yeah. And don't do the bumps. You'll be sure you'll get to do this longer. But I don't know. I'm not, yeah, I, I'm not poo-pooing I, the guy. I, agree, I, I totally agree with that yeah. assessment that overall it's look, you just might be better at being a personality right. within wrestling. Right. And if people aren't overall reacting to your matches and wrestling and wanting to see you climb further, if they're just happy to see you come out and do funny shit, stop wrestling. I mean, or you're going to do great in main roster WWE when they realize you could be a funny guy. Yeah. Listen. You could. Potentially, but it's a different it's a different time now. Yeah, but we don't have a, like, I guess... It's tr- our truth. There's no who else is like a modern day the funny guy. I guess some of the Alf Academy pre murder. Hey, more pre murder. is always pissed off. Pre murder. Yeah, he's always seething. That's true. And we lost another funny person uh, because we. This is our top story of the week that I figure we're going to spend a great deal of time on. Uh, Uncle Howdy resurfaces on WWE Monday Night Raw and reveals the group Wyatt Six. Do you want to walk us through the segment, Jake? Um, sure. Because you're a cinematour um, and uh, a lot of people felt like this is we're watching a scary movie. So the lights start to flicker and... And with audio cues warp, as as well, with really as well done do. audio cues. The the I, they do that thing. They do that thing where they shut down, but they make sounds when they do it. Yeah, and it was the fiend <laughs> shutdown music. Um, the the stuff that used to pre, whatever you call it, uh, uh, uh precede the theme music for the fiend, and then uh. I'm assuming while that was happening, production was frantically setting up a a door with fake vines around it, which was the door that I believe uh, Bray came back out of, like when he re-debuted as just Bray Wyatt post fiend fire murder and all that stuff. Um, the door opens and out comes crawling. Uh, what we believe to be uh, Nikki Cross as Sister Abigail doing her best ring crawl. She crawls. Th- oh, do we know that she's Sister Abigail? The fog- or we no, still- that's why I said Zero. dressed as. She's dressed as the puppet. Sorry, let me preface. The puppet from the Firefly Funhouse known as Sister Abigail, uh, but like a creepier full-size wrestler version of it. She walks up to a lantern she smells it. She likes the way it smells so much so that she stands up and she tells the camera guy, go back that way. <laughs> and he listens because he yeah. is uh, just like Paul. Heyman. He's got to get the scoop. He's just like Paul Heyman. He can't. He's afraid, but he's not going to say no. Um. So the camera goes around the prop setup door. Why you didn't go through it? I don't know. Why did you go around it? You by going around it, it's like it's like getting a tour of like a a, a Broadway stage and it just kind of ruins everything for you when you realize like it's just a piece of wood on one side. So he goes around mm-hmm. the flat. I kind of don't know why he didn't go through it. That's my biggest gripe with this whole thing is go through the fucking door. You weirdo. Why would you go around? All right, anyways, I'm I'm spiraling. So he goes ar- he goes around the door. Um. And um, there's a a nice, you know, two feet of fog on the ground just in all of production. We see the first few strewn bodies. I couldn't make out who that first little batch was. It seemed like maybe some production people or, I don't know, some some, uh, some NXT 2.0 people who they didn't bring up. I don't know. I wasn't sure. I thought maybe Carmelo Hayes. I thought one of the the, the hairdos was kind of the spirally hairdos. Maybe. But... Of that I, first batch. Yeah. They, they looked like younger dudes. And then 
we pan up and we see uh, who we believe to be Eric Rowan uh, holding a hammer that says help Oh, yeah, on those it. hips. That was Eric Rowan. Yeah, dressed as uh, a creepy version of Ramblin' Rabbit. Uh, and uh, uh, didn't quite know what to do with his hammer. He was like, should I hold it this way now? It was a little, he was a little awkward in his movements. I was a little like, oh, commit, buddy, commit. Come on, commit to what you're doing. Uh, I see Mike Lucas in chat says the APA used to beat up guys for not going through the door. Show some respect, cameraman. Yeah, my yeah. feelings exactly, Mike Lucas. Um, So then uh, we continue past uh, Ramblin' Murder Rabbit into uh, Gorilla. I guess that's, yeah, that's still considered Gorilla. The big, it's Gorilla's real big now. It's the big area with all the desks and stuff. We see a uh, a murdered, uh, not Walter, Gunther on the ground um, with what looks like a blood splatter. Gunther? Yeah, Gunther was murdered on the ground. The ring general has been murdered. Um, I don't, I didn't see Gunther. I saw. I saw Gunther. Chad Gable that came after, but that was in the, that was in the hallway before the hallway in the actual gorilla. Carrying a couple other bodies. But Gunther was and one, one of them? them. Yeah, Gunther was one of them. I'm pretty sure. And over that person was um, two other people dressed like uh, Mercy the Buzzard and Huskus the Pig, but they were like really creepy horror versions of them. And they all just kind of stood there and like tilted their heads and were like, yeah, we murdered this. We murdered these people, cameraman. Um, you get a pass. <laughs> well, because we want you to tell our story. Um, who lives, who dies, who tells your story? Okay. And then um, we go through beyond Gorilla to the hallway where we see a very close up. They do a very good point of showing us a close up of Chad Gable with a bullet hole in his head, murdered by a gun. By the way, not like bashed to death or strangled or like stabbed with like horror, but like a gunshot wound to the head. And then uh, we reveal Uncle Howdy. Who walks towards the camera and slowly picks up all of his friends all on the way back out. To uh, to Sister Abigail for a pose down in which he picks up the lantern and he says, we're here and he blows the lantern out. And that is how Raw went off the air. Um, there was no commentary during any of this. I don't believe. Was there? Do you remember? I don't think there was. No. Maybe I had my volume down. Um, it uh, it was. So for me, it was emotional because of the attachment to Bray. It, I think Rowan being a part of it uh, hit me in a way that like I wasn't expecting. I think Bo, Bo, by the way, had Bray written on. So the glove that used to say, um, uh, here uh, or heal and hurt that were on, uh, fiends gloves. He's wearing those. And it just says Bray, which I, that, that, that kind of got me. Um, like there's an emotional element to this that really, I was not expecting to hit me, but like, I got like really teary eyed and I got like, sad and there was a part of it was like like oh this is great because it's this it's like this next chapter of this creation of this really unique mind who touched a lot of people who was universally loved even when the you know story and booking was bad none of us were ever upset at bray you know what i mean like it was just that kind of thing where it's like bray just has he had that magic that we all loved watching him and uh then it went off the air and that like that sort of like emotional impact turned to like this can't be good right like this is like they're this isn't gonna succeed like i'm so worried at their ability to make this last uh horror gimmicks tend to not last long and are not booked well in pro wrestling uh you've added murder into it you've added like there's so many things that are they're not implied it's not that, murder it's not that they're not intriguing and by the way, I know we keep talking about like these characters. We have seen Firefly Funhouse where Bray has altered the reality of John Cena's existence. And so it's like, well, you know, we can they can easily have Chad Gable come out and say, like, I saw myself lying back there, but I was home watching TV, you know, watching the mon like, you know, it's it's spacey. It's or not spacey. It's magic. -y. 
So we don't know what we saw was real and all that stuff. So that stuff is intriguing. I'm just worried. Oh God, no. I'm just worried that that it's not going to be able to live up to the emotional connection that we're all going to have for Bray. Like if this just do stuff like this, sell a shit ton of fucking action figures, <laughs> make short films, I guess. I don't know. I'm just worried about them like wrestling for the tag team championships on, you know, at fucking roadblock or whatever. I, don't, I just, I'm worried about how this lasts and how it, carries the burden of being Bray's creation. Yeah, I I mirror that sentiment. Um I don't mirror the other sentiments of I certainly did not get emotional. I uh I was going back and looking at it and it's a little grainy what I'm looking at here via the Twitter video. Oh got it. But I think it's Andrade or Karrion Cross with their brains blown out. Oh not Gunther. Not- Really? I thought it was Gunther. I thought I even saw somebody posted Gunther. But yeah, let me. I mean, I can't imagine that the one of the most protected guys they have this whole time. Yeah, I mean, is just is a kind of nothing. There's also like a uh, hair on the sides of his head that's a little out of like we saw Karen Cross earlier in the night, and it looks like his hairdo. Oh, also, it looks like maybe there's a bun, which is Andrade ish, but not. Not the most protected guy that just gets taken out. That has his fucking brains blown out or whatever that oh, is. Oh, yeah. They are saying... I was... Uh, they, they are saying that that person that I think... That I thought was... Uh, I think you're right. That I thought was Gunther is probably Cross. Because that was the one with the blood splatter behind him. Yeah. Oh, well, there um, you go. I... <sighs> Overall, I thought the segment was kind of dopey. Like I, I like the looks. I like the all the effort of we're gonna make this debut. But I was certainly bummed out after watching what was a really good episode of Raw, and hearing uh, throughout because I watched it like a day later, and I didn't know what was all occurring. But I right. just kept seeing things on social media of like R.I.P. Chad Gable uh, and right. all this stuff of like wait. What is going on? Why does why is Chad Gable supposedly dead? Yeah, yeah. I thought Otis took him out. That's what I kept thinking. It's like oh, Otis right, finally right. went like that's it and does something where it went too far. Um, and then I see this and I go, <laughs> we don't see anyone breathing, we don't see anyone being taken out, we don't see anyone being thrown around. Right. So it just it's looks aftermath. like it's implied murder. When we're, and I'm not going to say in poor taste, I just think it doesn't come across well when the association is a guy who died. Yeah, I, I understand that. Um, and then it looks like everyone else is dead. So this group is killing because Bray is dead. Like, that's just what initial thoughts were. And I wasn't, I wasn't scared by it. I thought it was goofy. We'd seen the the gorilla position previously because Triple H and company are trying to keep Drew McIntyre from quitting. Right. So I guess they all left to go pursue him. So they got out of this. I and you know they they had they did what they did. I think I would have liked the start of this not being as high. I think I would have liked to see panic and people running terrified rather right. than yes everybody taken out. So if there's lights going out and people are panicking and freaked out, but they're keeping the camera in, like they're grabbing him by the lapel and like making him go to places and still record. But we see the grill position. Like we see interns, we see people just running headsets being thrown off and they're terrified for their lives. And then maybe like someone is done with a Chad Gable or someone is done and they're thrown against the wall and we see him just kind of slide down and we go like, Oh shit. Right. They took out right. a person. Yeah. I, the blood, when we don't see where it comes from yeah, and I don't, they're not normal wrestling cuts. Yeah, I, like it's all, yeah. oh. I don't disagree. That was, that was probably like my big gripe with this, that nothing actually happened. We didn't see anything happen. Yeah. And so it, it, it doesn't make for as an impactful debut for me as say like, when somebody comes out and I, I'm, I'm going to argue that uh, on SmackDown uh, uh, two days ago or whatever it was at the time of recording that uh, 
Jacob Fatu, that debut was like, oh crap, he came and he hurt people. <laughs> like, like there's something about yeah. the like watching the act of their what they're capable of versus and it's like, you know, it's a horror gimmick, and there's always gonna be that thing where it's like it's a part of wrestling that's not quite the wrestling. So it's like, yeah, we're going to suspend disbelief about like, oh, they staged a thing Like, because ultimately what we see is a bunch of guys laid down and went, does this look good? OK, good. All right. Everybody stand still. We're going to walk through here in a minute. And we all know that. And we all feel like it's not, you know, the, the wrestling is it's just a TV show like any TV show. I've argued that forever, which is why I don't like that it's grouped with sports in any capacity. But part of what the TV show is, is the disbelief that we are watching a sport. Right. And so if you're going to have a horror gimmick and horror characters and what we primarily see of them, especially in their debut, is the aftermath of something that you could have just shot. You didn't even need to be live. You could have went out and done a pre tape Everybody's adept at beating people up. Right. Right. That's what the whole right. job is. Also, I, I assume like after I thought about it for an hour or so, I go. Wait a minute, they just might have showed up after that happened that right. somebody else did that. 100%. Also, like, did like we not hear... No, did, why are they getting credit for doing this? Yeah, and it's also right... It's not... First off, somebody set the door up, okay? <laughs> we know someone set the door up. Who was that? Was that was it, the, was it like Huskis walking out, <laughs> like setting everything up, putting the vines up? But it's also just, you know, if you want us to believe that this occurred and it's not like this weird like alternate reality, which is what I think they're going to lean into... Like you're, it's still a live show being broadcast. So does nobody hear it to, to the commentators at the booth, not hear? Oh, I like for the, you know, triple H or whoever is usually in my ear. I'm sorry. The producer in my ear that I'm usually hearing has just screamed. What was that sound? What? Like there's no, there's no hullabaloo. I hear pants being shit. Yeah. There's no hullabaloo in the arena. You didn't hear the gunfire. <laughs> we heard. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Oh, it, who is turning down the power raw is not over this is absurd right. mass llama uh, should be mentioned also the, oh, i was gonna say mass, the group sorry i was gonna read the chat here mass llama says the ride may not be good but i'm along for it i will miss inspirational speaker bo dallas though yeah I, me too uh yes bo dallas being in the group who um you know the uncle howdy mask is on him dexter loomis Joe Gacy, Eric Rowan, and Nikki Cross. Now, that's not to say that things haven't ever changed in the past in WWE and they go like, oh, you're out and this person's in. They might do a switcheroo. Who knows? Maybe right. Maven will get to play one of the guys. But uh, I think one of the funniest parts about this is I think where the name broke for the Wyatt Six from what I've seen and read. Right. Do you know where? No. WWE shop.com. That's where, that's where they said what the name officially was and the spelling. Yeah. Of it. Cause a bunch of merchandise released like an hour after the show. Right. Perfect. Which also makes me go like, Ugh, come on. You can't <laughs> the scary, like Kevin Nash is rolling in his grave. You can't have the scary murderous group comes out, destroys all things at the end of Monday night raw. And then it's what? Who are they? What's happening? What's going on you know, here? Oh, I see. They have merchandise. You know they that didn't. Have been they didn't the kill. They didn't kill the people that work the dot com <laughs> and the merchandise designers. Yeah. yeah. Look, they're all also, still lower end guys. They do need some cash. I. So we're not going to deny that part. I also think that the the spelling is a big misstep with S I C K S as the word six. We we you know we poked fun at it at the cold open, but it literally sounds like one of our silly retribution name spellings. And yeah, by the way, good luck googling it because I just tried to Google it about who they <laughs> murdered, and it autocorrects to socks. So all you're gonna get, so you try to find Wyatt Six, and all you're gonna get is Wyatt Socks. Did you mean Wyatt Socks? Photos of socks, sock websites. I do have some Bray Wyatt socks. Well, that's what's gonna come up. If I go to Wyatt six, my socks. Oh God. Wyatt six. Yeah. Good luck. It does not. It just says you're seeing results for Wyatt socks. <laughs> Did you mean to, to write Wyatt six? Wyatt full grip sock. Oh, it's a type of sock. It's go Wyatt full grip sock. There we go. Oh yeah. And you know, to Maslama's point, I'm not out 
Like no, I didn't write this all off and go like, this is so dumb. I was disappointed to be sure. I think it's, it's a lot. It's, it was ambitious. I give it credit for that. The look is cool. That's, that's neat. It It's certainly to your point, it's hard to do the balance of like, it's a horror thing. And then they're going to come out and have sanctioned matches right. and follow rules and do all that. Um, I'm happy that every everyone is involved that hopefully wants to be involved. I'm kind of bummed that we don't get Dexter Loomis the way that he was. I agree. But if he's totally on board and wants to be doing this thing, same with Nikki Cross, like a lot of the yeah. players, I'm not familiar with Joe Gacy. Me not. He's the only one that I'm not familiar with. Well, I'm familiar with him in the sense that I know who he is. I know what he was doing in NXT, but I did not watch it. Yeah, so it's, I'm hoping that everyone is is on board and, and, and like actively participating and gets their input and gets to do cool shit. And it's not, Oh, I, I had something going right. and you're pulling me for this. That's probably not the case. Also, um, especially if we don't see their faces a lot, because how is that good for anybody? It could be anybody under the mask. And if the merch is the mask and the identity is the mask and the character, then again, there's a I I could really see an honor in like no I get to play this thing I want to be this character because I love Bray and I love what he left behind and like I want to honor that legacy I can totally see that but it's really hard to look back at people who have had these gimmicks and built big careers off of them like outside mm-hmm. of Bray really but Bray also started without a mask and then added one right so there's a it's a bit different there whereas like. If it's like, no, this is not Eric Rowan. This is fucking Murder Rabbit or Ramblin' Man or whatever the fuck they're going to come up with. I just don't know. I just don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried about the talent. Yeah. Um, it's questions like Alexa Bliss. She out because uh, right. she's I don't recall what her situation is. I don't know if she's currently a mom. I don't know if she's out with injury. Yeah. Uh, is it like, Hey, I want to be in that. It's like, Oh, you get to feud with them. You know, the questions that we'll have like with a right. Braun Strowman and stuff, how many people will they ultimately feud with? Will it be many? We've not seen things like this under the triple H regime. No. This is a new ambitious chapter for them yeah. because you know, this was Vince's bread and butter of right. big supernatural Right. Uh, out of the box characters and managing them. And he's taken on five yeah. all at once. Yeah. It's not just, I got a guy. Right. It's a group of five. And one guy who's, I don't know how much Eric Rowan is going to be wrestling full time because last time I've seen him, it's a bigger guy. He's older, right. moves slower. Right. Um, you can rely on the other people, but you're down to, you know, four wrestlers right. that are going to be the active big you, participants and what we've seen previously of them again, like n- no real knowledge of Joe Gacy. Dexter Loomis is kind of hot and cold right. when he was having his, his run of stuff. Bo Dallas has not been the biggest threat in the world mm-hmm. when it comes to things in the world of WWE. No, not at all. Um, it's a lot to, it's a it's a pretty big uphill battle I, to be making this group yeah. a, a big threat. Yeah, I feel like if they were to keep names, Bose would be the one that would be on the chopping block. Like they might they will more likely say, Yep, that's Eric Rowan, that's Nikki Cross, that's Dexter Loomis. These ha- these characters have some of this in their history. But I could see them being like, that's not Bo Dallas. That's, you know, something, something rotund, you know, whatever they call him or Bo Howdy. They might even call him. Yeah, they. I will say Uncle Howdy is a, is an unfortunate. That's an unfortunate. I, that's a tough one to get behind long term. You can a, you can get behind it better when Bray is there. Maybe. But when it's like right. the leader is Uncle, Uncle Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> right, sure. Sure. Yeah. Hey, what are you watching in here? Uncle Howdy. You turn that shit off and go do your homework. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm. Uh, we'll see where it goes. Depending on when this episode drops, people might have already seen another part of this. If they do something more on Raw, um, it is one of those things where I think less could be more here. But again, that's that's not great for these these people. Also, do you think Braun Strowman? That's not how wrestling goes. Like it's pissed? you know, it goes all out. It's ambitious. It's it's pretty nutty. I mean, right. they had to make a splash, right? They had to right. do something, sure, crazy. 
I, I would love to have been in the meeting to hear about all the things that they either Pitched. wanted to do yeah, or thought like that's too much it's too little you know maybe we'll hear the stories later down the line of here's what was it what we intended to do originally right. and then they went no we're gonna do this and then we said this chad gable looks dead no it's great <laughs> uh do, do you think braun Strowman is upset he's not a part of it might be but then again, they might pitch it to they. Who knows? They they might have talked to the people that like Alexa Bliss and Braun right. Strowman and said like, "Hey, you're gonna be a major part of this. Right. You're not in that group, but you'll be fighting against it for these reasons, right? right? It's like yeah. Ray is gone, but you're tarnishing the name that I, he was, or you're doing. I was gonna say that just the wrong. That things. brings me to another thing I never thought about is like they can't be heels. <laughs> Like people love Bray, and if this is gonna be the lineage of Bray and the thing he left behind, they're never gonna get booed. How do you have horror people murderers as the good as like, yay, murder that guy? Like, it's you know you're supposed to fear for the people you like from the big scary monsters. You're not supposed to root for the big scary monsters. So that's gonna be another tough booking thing. Well, you do after like the third movie when they start quipping a lot. Sure, of course. And you just want to see the teenager death. That's a good point. It does. Maybe that's what they are. Maybe it's maybe they simply just like like for a while, I think they pitched having the shield be that where it was like they were the shield of justice. Right. Where it was like they just come out when you do something wrong, when you do something that upsets the balance. The shield comes after you and you pay the price. Nobody's safe from the shield. Maybe this is just what that is, where it's just going to be like, hey, if you're a mean bully. Uh, and you, uh, you know, elbow block or, uh, you know, a shoulder block, a, uh, uh, Maxine Dupree young lady's hurts leg. leg, then we murder you. <laughs> you got it coming brother. Um, well, you know, we'll see only the future knows. And, uh, I, I'm definitely intrigued. I, there, I have notes. Like I said, I have notes, but I'm not, I'm not angry at it. I'm just like, uh, oh, not sure if that's what I would have done, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I'm kind of saying, I, I think my initial reaction was like, Oh, that's disappointing yeah. for me. Right. And people are talking and hyped about it. Cool. Like, cool. Yeah. It's fodder for us to talk yeah. about on the people show. Stoked. Again, not writing it off. Want to see what's next. Hopefully it's a little bit more grounded. Yeah. And, uh, talk, but, but I, I do have the, the feeling of, I do want to see what's next. I want to see this for a little while. And if they lose me at some point, because I mean, if they do that thing that you, you mentioned in passing with, Chad Gable saw a different reality right. than what the rest of us saw yeah, as like viewers with the, the camera Firefly at the time. House, yeah. If anything like that happens, I am way out. That's a, fa- that's a hard fast forward and I'm not dealing with any of that. All right. Well, um, one thing that you will be dealing with is our hotline. Cause we have to go take a call. Um, but before we do, we must once again, acknowledge Gilbert short, AKA Goliathon current pwp world champion he will defend that title on next week's episode so please uh become a patron over at patreon.com slash pwpowskis and uh, challenge him for that title um we are going to go take a hotline call uh scott narver say goodbye to the live stream my live stream 747-666-5606 that's 747-666-5606 or you can send a voicemail to hotline at pwpalskis.com and we will play your call right here on the program. Scott Narver, you want to see what the hotline has in store for us today? Absolutely. Hey, Scott. Hey, Jake. This is Gilbert up in the Bay Area, a.k.a. Goliathon, a.k.a. Batal Andarus. And um, I just wanted to try in a couple things you guys talked about. Uh, number one. For, this is for Chris, Chris Daria 7. Um, I personally think that my favorite new uh, theme of the past five years is uh, Brian Danielson's AEW theme. Uh, maybe I'm biased because he's uh, one of my favorites uh, as well. But I like the fact that they turned um, uh, Ride of the Valkyries into like a, a pop R&B bop. And I, I just kind of like it. It's fun. Um and I also wanted to say that I think that once um, uh, Otis 
and uh, Maxine get free of Ch- Chad, assuming he's still alive. God rest his soul if he's not. Um, <laughs> that they should go together, and like as a baby faces, Maxine could be like a Miss Elizabeth style uh, character where she could be his valet, but you know he's uh, he's kind of limited by the. Um, he's always trying to protect her, and that could be the thing that puts him at a disadvantage to the heels who are, you know, more unscrupulous. Um, but I would like to hear if you have any other ideas about things he could do. Um, just because, you know, I like the guy and other than bringing back mother trucker, I'm not sure, uh, what else they could do. Um, but I think that those are probably the strongest ideas, you know, but I'm not a WB writer. So what do I know? But I would like to know what you, what you think. Uh, so you guys have a good week. Bye. Gilbert Short may not be a WWE writer, but he is the champ. Always oh, nice from here, from the champ. Um, yes, indeed. Uh, he answered Chris Daria's question from last week, question mark, or maybe the week prior. I don't remember. Um, but uh, about music, I, you know, couldn't even hum the Brian Danielson AEW music. <laughs> You don't know right of the Outside, reference? No, I know that, but I'm talking about like the, because I know that like they made a new version of it, as he said, and like modernized it, made it like a pop tune. Couldn't, couldn't tell you. Well, it's your loss. It's a good, it's a good pull. It's a good one. But now I think he's mostly doing the final countdown from, from right. what I gather. Right, right. Um, What to do with an Otis? Yeah, I like the idea of him and Maxine. I, I think I mentioned that when we were talking about it uh, during our recap of of the, the PPVs, PLEWPPVs, uh, that you, we never, we were never able to capitalize on Mandy Rose and Otis because of the pandemic. So like try to recapture that if you can. With the, they did. They did what? They capitalized. Oh. I, I don't know that they did. <laughs> if so, we didn't see it, but, they uh, kissed in the pool. Yeah. They kissed in the pool, but, I want them to. I want him to kiss Maxine in the front of the whole crowd and everybody cheer. Um, I like them together. I think that's fine. I think Maxine is uh, in a position where I think she's best used in that place as like a, you know, uh, the sweet person that we all want to protect and we don't want her to be hurt. And we want like I like her as just a little perpetual baby face girl who just wants everybody to be happy like i like that i think that's a good fit for her more so than the like tough fighter because i just don't think i don't buy it with her but what about when she was a maximum male uh you know the the, the models that she was she made him otis yeah she's um, recruiting him yeah if I she don't... goes back to that what if she goes back to like these highfalutin ways well, shop it on Rodeo Drive. Then, and then he's like, oh, geez. Then she brings Otis along and Otis becomes, turns back into Otis. And then Mother Trucker comes and saves him. He goes, what are you? What have you become? And then he just hands and him a goes, steak. I'm sorry. Who are you? He hands him a steak and then he hands him a weight. And, and then he goes, steak, wait, steaks and weights, steaks and weights. And then it just like snaps him out of it. Like, uh, what's his face? Festus. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Nobody really wants Mother Trucker to show I liked, back up. I like, liked Mother Trucker and him. I liked Heavy Machinery. They were fun together. I liked their their ride along was very entertaining. <laughs> I was like, oh, do this on so TV more. So that ten minutes of television. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do that on TV more. Have I know. You I like to I see what he looks a... like now. What he's up to. What no. he's doing. Anything? No. They had like a. Does he have a podcast fun... on your network? They had like a really fun shorthand too. Like I enjoyed their their brand of humor with one another. Like I think that's the stuff that works in wrestling when it's like the new day. Like the the new day are very uh unique in that like only those three dudes could come up with those bits because it's what they do when they're just knocking about, right? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Let's see what let's see what Tucker's up to. Wikipedia is good, Nelson. Tucker. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about Paul Gallagher. Nope, that's not him. That's a different Tucker. Who's yeah, that's not Nope, this I'm talking about I'm, Levi Rolla yeah, Levi, Cooper. Levi Rolla Cooper. Or Levy? It's gotta be sure. Levi. It's gotta be Levi. All right, Tucky. Yeah. There's no like current. 
It just says he's as of uh, 20 one thing in 2023. Oh yeah. According to the Sportster didn't sign with any major promotion following his exit from the company and is currently working for the independent company Defy Wrestling. Oh, there you go. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they say. So you you dare defy that information? I I question it. Cuz I can't just take one headline and go like that's it, that's true. Um Yeah, cuz even when I click the article uh, I'm not seeing him, so I don't know where where he went. Well, oh, there he is. I okay. like I like him. Yeah, I don't. I can't tell you what he looks like now, but whatever. Watch Defy Wrestling. I I defy you to do that. Um. Other than that, what to do with Otis post Chad Gable is, um, I gonna murder him. I guess. <laughs> Add up to the pile. They love murdering. You looking up at something else? Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to find this dude. He maybe he's just on the lam. He went into witness protection after witnessing some murders. I don't think anybody's really worried about him. So why would he need protection? Uh, Defy Wrestling. What? Is, all right. It's not helpful so far. I'm not even seeing him in yeah, the photos. He, he like doesn't exist on the internet. As far as I can see. He might be called Tucker Knight. Well, that was his name in NXT. Yes, Tucker Knight was his, that was his name. So they dropped one knight for another? <laughs> Apparently, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I can't find this guy. And as soon as we stop recording, I'm never going to look again. Well, there you have it. Um, that'll do it, kids. Thanks so much. Uh, listen, you know all the stuff that we say. Become a patron. Check out the shop over at uh, dragonwagonshop.com. Leave us a rating or review on your podcast player of choosing, assuming that you have that ability. And follow us on the socials at PW Palskis. I'm at Jake Lloyd Bacon. He's at Scott Narver. Um, before we go, Scott and I, we need to thank our current Patreon Palskis. Yes, which doesn't inclu- include a, <laughs> um, excuse me, Mina. Real Levy Cooper on X. That's not a thing. Uh, yes, thank you to our Patreon Palskis. This is the only show where you get a retribution name and a maximum male model name. Why? Because they're apparently back in vogue. We're on the cutting edge, people. So, Thank you to AJ0314, a.k.a. Binary, a.k.a. Matri69, Alex Pierce, a.k.a. Figs, a.k.a. Zatoys, Andrea Beeler, a.k.a. Pollen Hate, a.k.a. Achu Detest, Curtis Mason, a.k.a. Hurtis, a.k.a. O'Shea, Gilbert Short, a.k.a. Goliathon, a.k.a. Battle on the Ruse, a.k.a. The Current PWP Champ, Mass Llama, a.k.a. Spitz, a.k.a. Jacara Lover, Michael Beltran, a.k.a. Limestone, a.k.a. La Naturelle, Miguel Diaz, a.k.a. Bipod, a.k.a. Too Much Husk, Mike Lucas, a.k.a. Hackensack, a.k.a. Luger Testicle, Shay Teslay, a.k.a. Privates, Suicide, a.k.a. A.k.a. Tim Bemis, a.k.a. Wardrack, a.k.a. TussleQuest, Tim Redbeard, a.k.a. Blood Fuzz, a.k.a. Blue Diffuse, Tom Hader, a.k.a. Cupid, a.k.a. Cherub, and Tony Griggs, a.k.a. Big Griggs, a.k.a. Grand Grisois. Thanks to each and every one of you for continued support of the program. Um, That'll do it for us here at the PWP. We hope you had fun. Always a blast hanging out with you, the Pro Wrestling Palskis. Hey, thanks for listening to Dragon Wagon Radio. If you're enjoying this show, check out dragonwagonshop.com and get yourself some sweet merch while supporting your favorite indie podcast network. That's dragonwagonshop.com. It's Dragon Wagon.